So, this is the Star Adventure 2i Wi-Fi Pro that I have been using for my astrophotography for a year now and I have taken some really good images with this one. But being an astrophotographer in Sweden, I have realized that there is a very important factor that I really need to take into consideration and that is time. Although I had some really great results with the Star Adventure, I do, however, have also had a lot of failures. And I mean a lot of failures. And here in the Nordic, we have long days during summer and long nights during winter. And that means that during the summer, we don't have any starry nights. It's completely bright outside and you can't see the stars for like, almost four months and during the winter months it's really humid and it's really cloudy so although you have a lot of darkness you don't get to see many stars so the like the, the high season of astrophotography here in Sweden is like autumn and spring which is maybe two or three or if you're lucky four months and that is not every month, it's like a few nights per month. So you have a very limited amount of time to actually do some data collection. So with that said, you really have to optimize your gear. And with that, I mean, I really need some fast optics. I use my Canon F2.8 lenses. You would benefit from a mono camera, which gathers in more photons per time unit. And of course, you can't really afford to fail that many times when you're doing some deep space imaging that I do. With that said, I had to upgrade something and I started with this. So I got myself this one, the ZWO AM5. Now you might think that it's a little bit excessive of me to go from a roughly $500 mount up to directly to a $3,000 mount. But as I mentioned previously, time is of the essence and I really don't have time to have some in-between mounts like the, the Star Adventure GTI or something in that price range. I was thinking that I might as well go for the better ones directly and uh, save myself both time and money in the long run. So this video is about my first impressions about the ZWO AM5 and like the pros and cons that I detected pretty quickly when I started using this mount and when I started to uh, put it together. Because as you can see, I haven't had time to do some cable management yet. Uh, that is for the summer and the summer project when I'm not gonna photograph anything anyway. So here are the pros and cons on the, the first impressions that I had the AM5. Starting with the cons, um, there was a big con here, and that is that it doesn't come with a power cord. So you don't get a power cord or out, not outlet, but you don't get any power adapter to the AM5. Now I do have an ASI Air and they use exactly the same power. So I could just take the power from the AM5. No, so I could just take the power from the ASI Air and use it to my AM5. And then I use the AM5 to power the ASI Air. But I mean, this new trend that you don't really get everything that you need when you buy some electronics, because you will probably have it at home is something that I don't like. I think it's strictly economical and I know that Apple started with that. I don't know about others, but I personally don't have a lot of, of like a spare box of electronics that I could just go and pick from. I have to go out and I have to find the correct specifications and I have to buy that. And I really don't like that. I mean, just give us everything, please. Another con of about the, the AM5 was uh, this small holder here on the side. I know that this holder is uh, for the ASI Air and you can put the ASI Air in another, um, in another direction, um, but I do like it to be parallel with my AM5, so I chose to put it like this. But the problem is then that you can't really screw it on properly. 
um, you can't really reach with your fingers and it's really hard to know that you have securely attached your ASI Air and that just doesn't feel right, you know? I would at the very least have uh, screws instead so I could use a screwdriver to screw them on properly. Now I can only secure these screws with my fingers and the spacing is just not large enough for me to feel confident that I have screwed these screws tightly enough and I need to check them every time I rig up and go out with this mount. Another problem that I had, and this was a potential showstopper for me, I could have just wasted my money and I was a bit nervous at first, and that is the polar alignment of this mount. The AM5 doesn't have a polar scope, and you use your ASI Air or another software to do your polar alignment where your mount will take a photograph first then rotate 60 degrees and then take another photograph and then do the calculations on where you need to be to have a correct polar alignment. Uh, now the problem that I had is that I photograph on my balcony and I have a big wall on my left side and I can't reach Polaris from that side so every time I did a polar alignment with the Star Adventure, I always rotated clockwise. Now, this scope, when it rotates automatically, it will start to rotate counterclockwise. And that is a problem for me because then when the rotation is done, it's going to hit the walls and it's not going to see any stars and it's going to say plate solving failed. So I was really worried there for a while, but after reaching out to some communities on Facebook and some ZWO AM5 communities, they gave me this really, really good tip that I don't start with zero degrees when I start my polar alignment, but I rather start uh, rotating the mount 60 degrees to where I want it to start, and then I just let it rotate back to zero degrees when it's doing the automatic polar alignment. So when I start my polar alignment, I always start it in this position. I let it take the photograph and then it's just going to rotate automatically counterclockwise 60 degrees to roughly zero or original home position and do the polar alignment from there. But still, I would have liked the ability to choose the rotation on a, on a polar alignment. I mean, clockwise or counterclockwise. I was a little bit confused and surprised that I didn't have that option. Now, for the last con that I've experienced in this mount, like as a first impression, are the screws to do the polar alignment. I had this problem with the Star Adventure 2, so I'm kind of used to it. When I adjust the mount to point a bit higher and I overshoot Polaris, for instance, and I need to uh, go down again, then there's gonna be a small, small gap where uh, the, the mount will actually jump a little bit. So it will always go down a little bit too much. That, that is just a small annoying thing. And I know that I can live with it because I've lived with it with the Star Adventure. So I am used to that. But still, I would have liked a little bit tighter uh, design on the screws here, you know? So I don't have that gap. Because right now, if I overshoot Polaris, I am really, really careful not to undershoot Polaris because then I know that I, I, I'm gonna have to switch directions and I'm gonna have that jump and then the entire polar alignment is going to be off and I basically have to start off from the beginning. That might be because there's something that I'm doing wrong, I'm not sure, I've only had this mount for like two weeks or something, so I'm still learning it, but uh, again, these are my first impressions and that has been an impression. Let's talk about the pros. Now, I had to buy something that is good for me. I live in a white zone. I live in the central of Stockholm, where it's, uh, it's like a Boro 8, 9 scale, and it's extremely light polluted. Um, so I need to take, I need to be able to take my stuff out to some darker locations. And the Star Adventurer did enable me to do that. And so does this AM5 mount too. I mean, it is incredibly light. I can just take it up and carry it with me wherever I want. It's small, it's light, it's portable. It is everything that you want from a good mount that's portable. Another thing about 
this mount that I love is that it truly delivers. I mean, the Star Adventurer did its job, but it failed. I failed like almost 60 to 80 percent of the time. Uh, I did a video about that and uh, that managed to make my success rate go up quite a bit, but I was still very nervous and anxious every time I was going to photograph because I really didn't know if I was going to have a good session or not. And sometimes I invested a lot of time and money and energy and time away from the family to go out in the woods and I simply didn't have a good session. I couldn't track enough and I couldn't, the dithering wasn't helping. And, and that, that was like extremely frustrating. With the AM5, I have tried it from my balcony, I think like seven times now. And we had a lot of starry nights in the last two weeks. And it has performed flawlessly every time. I've been using 300 seconds for five minutes sub exposures, and they are all pin sharp. And I mean all, no sub has been rejected. <laughs> I, I haven't rejected any sub whatsoever. They're all super crisp and sharp. Another pro is that I had the, I already had the ASI Air and together with the AM5 they work flawlessly. It's just such a good system to work with. I mean, I just use the app to control and to start taking pictures. Another pro is that it doesn't have a polar scope, which I love. One of my main reasons for not starting astrophotography earlier is that I didn't see Polaris. I simply thought that if you don't see Polaris, you can't do polar alignment and you can't do astrophotography. And that's simply not the case with this one. You don't have any of that, those excuses anymore. You just point your gear towards, roughly towards north and let the ASI Air do all the work for you. Another impression that I had is the build quality of this thing. I mean, although it's light and small and portable, it is extremely sturdy. I mean, the quality, I, I don't know, it just feels really, really good. I mean, yeah, I don't have that much to compare with, but the, the quality is like really nice on this one. It doesn't feel cheap whatsoever. Everything feels sturdy, robust and strong. I mean, I feel confident putting my gear on this one. Shooting from the balcony where these things are like hanging out of the railing and can fall five stories down and crack and just completely be destroyed. I still feel confident just leaving the things out. And I know that the AM5 and the quality of the AM5 will prevail. Yeah, and the last, the uh, first impressions that I had was this box. So it comes with a small box where you can put your AM5 mount in and you can carry it wherever you want to go. And this is just good, great for me. So I don't have to use one of my photography bags carrying it around. So, okay, so I'm gonna stop right there. As you can see, I experienced a small technical glitch with my camera that simply didn't want to focus correctly. Instead, do enjoy some additional b-roll of the AM5 and know that I am truly pleased with the initial results of the mount. I have had time to compare it a little bit with my Star Adventurer. Using the same gear and target, those results will come up in another video together with other great content about photography and astrophotography. Summer is coming up in Sweden right now. So it's getting time for more landscape photography and adventures in the forests. So don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more of my content. And do give this video a like if you enjoyed it, it's truly helpful. And as usual, comments, suggestions, thoughts are highly appreciated in the comment section. And I'll end this video with a picture that I took the first light with this mount, the Elephant Trunk Nebula from my Boral 8-9 zone and see you next time.